the wobble method. Have you ever observed as an ambulance passes you, the pitch changes? The same with the passing train or a vehicle with the sounding horn. This is due to the Doppler effect. The same principle is used to detect exoplanets using the radial velocity method, also known as Doppler spectroscopy. Otto Struve, a Ukrainian-American astronomer, proposed using powerful spectrographs to detect distant planets in 1952. He described how a large planet, such as Jupiter, would cause its parent star to wobble slightly as the two objects orbited around their respective centers of mass. Gravity pulls on everything, for example, stars pull planets, and planets pull stars. When planets pull on stars, it will be either our way or the opposite way. This makes the star glow either bluer or redder due to the shift of wavelength in light. This pulling of planets makes stars wobble, and telescopes on Earth can detect them. This method was used to detect 51 Pegasi b, a Jupiter-like exoplanet in 1995. Planet hunters can track a star's spectrum using highly sensitive spectrographs attached to ground-based telescopes, looking for periodic shifts or spectral wobbles. The spectrum appears slightly blue-shifted at first, then slightly red-shifted at the end. If the shifts are regular, occurring at fixed intervals of days, months, or even years, they are almost certainly caused by a body orbiting the star, tugging it back and forth over the course of its orbit. If the mass of the body is less than about 10 times that of Jupiter, or about 3,000 times the mass of Earth, it is most likely a planet. Larger mass objects are most likely deemed to be stars. Since the initial exoplanet discovery, astronomers began to use this method to find many more planets similar to Jupiter. This method of finding exoplanets is suited for finding big planets with close orbits around their host stars and to measure their minimum mass. But the fact that the radial velocity method cannot accurately determine the mass of a distant planet and can only provide an estimate of its minimum mass is a drawback. This is a major issue for planet hunters because mass is the primary criterion for distinguishing planets from small stars. Some astronomers believe that at least some of the planets detected by the radial velocity method are actually very low mass stars rather than planets. This technique is also suitable for ground-based telescopes on Earth. However, this technique is not suitable for planets with distant orbits and detecting smaller Earth-like planets. It's also not suitable for measuring exoplanets' diameters. As of the present day, more than 1,000 exoplanets have been found using radial velocity or Doppler spectroscopy, or the wobble method. As most of the planets detected by these methods are hot versions of Jupiter, and as these planets are near to their host stars, it is highly unlikely to find life on them. The transit method. While the radial velocity method can determine a planet's mass, the transit photometric method can determine its radius. The first transit photometry detections were made in 1999, when a planet passes in front of its parent star's disk, the observed visual brightness of the star decreases slightly, or dims, depending on the relative sizes of the star and the planet. The amount a star dims during a transit is proportional to the size of the star and the planet. A small planet passing through a large star causes only a slight dimming, whereas a large planet passing through a small star causes a more noticeable effect. Transits can assist in determining a variety of exoplanet characteristics. The size of the exoplanet's orbit can be calculated by calculating the time period it takes to orbit once, and the size of the planet itself can be calculated by calculating how much the star's brightness has been reduced. These changes in brightness are characterized by very small dips, and for fixed periods of time, usually in the neighborhood of one ten-thousandth of the star's overall brightness, lasting only a few hours. Once captured, 
light can be probed to determine the composition of exoplanet atmospheres. Consider a prism. When you shine white light through it, it splits the light into a rainbow spectrum. The color bands of the spectrum can be read by scientists like a barcode, revealing which molecules are present. It's a technique known as transit spectroscopy, in which light from a star travels through the atmosphere of an orbiting planet and reaches our telescopes in space or on the ground, telling us where it's been. The transit timing variation method takes into account whether transits occur with strict periodicity or whether there is variation. When multiple transiting planets are detected, the transit timing variation method is frequently used to confirm them. Transit duration variation refers to changes in the duration of the transit. Exomoons, apsidal precession for eccentric planets caused by another planet in the same system, or general relativity, can all cause duration variations. This method is used to detect planetary systems with binary stars. It is a particularly useful method for space-based observations that can stare at stars for weeks or months at a time, although it can be useful for ground-based telescopes as well. This method is good at determining diameter, but bad at determining mass of the planets. Transit photometry searches can operate on a massive scale. Transit surveys, both ground-based and space-based, can observe up to 100,000 stars at once. The main issue with the transit photometry method is that a transit must occur in order for the photometric effect to be measured. A distant planet must pass directly between its star and Earth. Not all planets orbiting other stars transit their stars as seen from Earth. Another issue is that a planet's transit only lasts a fraction of its entire orbital period. A planet's orbit may take months or years to complete, but the transit is likely to last only hours or days. As a result, even if astronomers observe a star with a transiting planet, it is extremely unlikely that they will witness a transit in progress. Because the smallest stars can have diameters similar to giant planets, the transit photometry method frequently produces false positives. Despite its disadvantages, this method is used to find more than 3,900 planets to date, and it will help to detect many more in the future. Instruments of Detection The Kepler Space Telescope heralded the modern era of planet hunting. Kepler entered an Earth-trailing orbit and focused its attention on a small patch of sky. It had been staring at that patch for four years. There were 150,000 stars in that small patch. Kepler was on the lookout for tiny dips in the amount of light emitted by individual stars caused by planets passing in front of them. In its lifetime, Kepler observed 530,506 stars and detected 2,662 planets. The transit technique is used by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which was launched in 2018. Spitzer and Hubble Space Telescopes have been used to discover exoplanets and learn more about their characteristics. The James Webb Space Telescope is now ready to probe the atmospheres of the exoplanets using the transit method. Gravitational Microlensing Method Gravitational microlensing is one of the more commonly used methods for indirectly detecting exoplanets. A microlensing exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star other than our Sun and is detectable due to the effects of its planetary system's gravitational field on the passing light of a distant background star. Microlensing is the only known method for discovering planets that are truly far away from Earth. Whereas radial velocity searches look for planets in our immediate galactic neighborhood, up to 100 light years away, and transit photometry can potentially detect planets hundreds of light years away, microlensing can find planets orbiting stars near the galaxy's center, thousands of light years away. This method, in essence, 
uses the gravitational force of distant objects to bend and focus light from a star. When a planet passes in front of the star, with respect to the observer, or in other words, makes a transit, the light dips measurably, which can then be used to determine the presence of a planet. Einstein's general theory of relativity predicted the astronomical effect of microlensing. When light from a star passes very close to another star on its way to an observer on Earth, the gravity of the intermediary star slightly bends the light rays from the source star, causing the two stars to appear farther apart than they normally would. If a planet is close enough to the lensing star that it crosses one of the two light streams emanating from the source star, the planet's gravity bends the light stream and produces a third image of the source star for a brief period of time. When measured from Earth, this effect appears as a brief burst of brightness that lasts several hours to several days and is superimposed on the regular pattern of the microlensing event. Such spikes are telltale signs of the presence of a planet for planet hunters. Furthermore, the precise characteristics of the microlensing light curve, such as its intensity and length, reveal a great deal about the planet itself to scientists. The microlensing events can be used to calculate exoplanets' total mass, orbit, and period with high accuracy and reliability. Microlensing can detect the most distant and smallest planets of any method currently available for detecting extrasolar planets. Microlensing is most sensitive to planets that orbit at moderate to large distances from their star. Microlensing searches, like transit photometry, are massive, targeting tens of thousands of planets at the same time. Microlensing surveys, due to their sensitivity to low-mass planets orbiting at relatively large distances from their stars, can yield discoveries of Earth-sized and smaller worlds orbiting at Earth-like distances from sun-like and larger stars. Planets detected by microlensing will never be observed again, unlike planets detected by other methods, which are associated with specific stars and can be observed repeatedly. This is due to the fact that microlensing events are unique and do not repeat themselves. Another issue with microlensing is that the detected planet's distance from Earth can only be approximated. This could result in thousands of light year errors when dealing with planets tens of thousands of light years away. Microlensing is reliant on infrequent and random events. As seen from Earth, the passage of one star precisely in front of another, with a planet orbiting the lensing star positioned relatively close by, is pretty rare. Direct Imaging Method Only a few exoplanets have ever been discovered by using direct imaging. Direct imaging of exoplanets is extremely difficult, if not impossible, in most cases. Planets are easily lost in the brilliant glare of the stars they orbit because they are small and dim. Nonetheless, even with current telescope technology, there are rare occasions when a planet can be directly observed. While more difficult than indirect methods, this method is the most promising for characterizing the atmospheres of exoplanets. So far, this method has confirmed only a few planets, and many more are expected to be discovered in the near future. Future missions and projects to facilitate direct imaging are being planned. Ground-based telescopes with adaptive optic systems produce sharper images, allowing astronomers to distinguish between planet and starlight. Ground-based or space-based telescopes equipped with coronagraphs can block the star's light in the same way that you might shade your eyes from direct sunlight, making it easier to spot planets. Missions to fly a star shade in formation with the telescope blocking starlight before it reaches the imaging instrument have also been proposed. 
One of the most obvious benefits of direct imaging is that it produces fewer false positives. Scientists can learn a lot about the planet by using direct imaging. For example, in the case of Fomalhaut b, the planet's interaction with the protoplanetary disk and the fact that it is invisible in the infrared provided strong limits to its mass, and its exceptional brilliance led scientists to hypothesize that it is surrounded by a massive ring system. In the case of HR8799, infrared radiation from the objects combined with planetary formation models yields a rough estimate of the planet's mass. Direct imaging works best for planets with large orbits and a high mass, such as gas giants. It is also very useful for detecting planets that do not transit in front of a star. Direct imaging is more difficult than other methods due to the obscuring effect light from a star has. In other words, detecting light reflected from a planet's atmosphere is extremely difficult when its parent star is so much brighter. As a result, direct imaging opportunities are extremely limited with current technology. Planets can generally only be detected using this method when they orbit at great distances from their stars or if they are extremely massive. As a result, this method isn't particularly useful for finding potentially habitable exoplanets like Earth. The Astrometry Method Astrometry is the most ancient method of searching for extrasolar planets. As early as 1943, astronomer Kai Strand of Swarthmore College's Sproul Observatory announced that his astrometric measurements revealed the presence of a planet orbiting the star 61 Cygni. Astrometry is the precise measurement of a star's position and movement. When planet hunters use astrometry, they look for a minute but consistent wobble in a star's position relative to other stars. If a periodic shift of this magnitude is detected, it is almost certain that the star is being orbited by an unseen companion planet. Astrometry is one of the most sensitive techniques for finding extrasolar planets. Astrometry can be used on a much larger variety of stars because, unlike transit photometry, it is not reliant on the distant planet being in nearly perfect alignment with the line of sight from Earth. Astrometry also provides an accurate estimate of a planet's mass, not just the minimum value, unlike the radial velocity method. Extrasolar planet discovery via astrometry is extremely difficult, so difficult that it has yet to be accomplished perfectly. It requires a level of precision rarely achieved even with the largest and most advanced telescopes. This method is not great for determining the exoplanet's diameter, and it is very difficult to detect many exoplanets at once. Using another method like spectroscopy in parallel to astrometry may make it easier to detect exoplanets with greater accuracy and precision. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to the channel.